Hello, my name is Emma, and in today's lesson, I am going to teach you my favorite tips on how to improve your spelling. Before we begin, I wanted to first talk about why is spelling important? It's actually very important, and I'm going to give you some reasons why. So why does spelling matter? Well, when you're learning new words, spelling actually, learning to spell the word helps you to remember the word better. And that actually has to do with your brain and how your brain learns new information. So learning how to spell a word helps you to remember the word better. This is my favorite reason why you should learn how to spell and why you should improve your spelling. When you have poor spelling, unfortunately, if you are looking for love, it can make finding love difficult, especially if you are looking for love online. So if you're on Tinder or some of these dating apps, if you have poor spelling, it makes it difficult for you. The reason is when people see spelling mistakes, they think that maybe you're not as intelligent. Um, I know this is not correct. Just because you make a spelling mistake doesn't mean you're smarter or less intelligent than someone else. But on dating apps like Tinder, if you make a spelling mistake, people might think this. I don't think this, but other people might judge you if you make a spelling mistake. Um, another reason why it's important to improve your spelling is because poor spelling can impact your ability to get a job. When you make spelling mistakes on your resume or on your cover letter or just, you know, to your boss, um, it can impact how people see you and it does not look professional. So it's very important for work to have good spelling. Finally, if you are learning English and you plan to take a test like the IELTS, the TOEFL, the TOEIC, any of these tests, it's important to have good spelling because when you make a spelling mistake, you lose marks, okay? So you lose score, you, you, you lose marks uh, when you make a spelling mistake on these tests. So, spelling is important. Now I am going to teach you some tips on how to become a better speller. Okay, so how do you become better at spelling? My first tip is learn prefixes. So what is a prefix? A prefix is a part of a word that has meaning. It comes at the beginning of the word and many words actually have similar prefixes. So let me show you some examples to help you understand what a prefix is. We have the word here unhappy. We have the word here unprofessional. Both of these words have the same prefix. The prefix is un. So unhappy means not happy. Unprofessional means not professional. So one way to improve your spelling is to start um, focusing on prefixes. Pay attention to them. Learn the prefixes and that will help you with your spelling. Uh, here are some more examples of prefixes. We have distracted disappointed. Many words in English start with D-I-S. So those are prefix, sorry, prefixes. So learning the common ones can really help you with your spelling. One more example of a prefix. In English, R-E is a very common prefix. So we have reply, we have repeat. Um, these are just some examples of words with the prefix re in them. So by learning prefixes, you can improve your spelling. My next tip is very similar. Learn suffixes. So what's a suffix? 
Well, a prefix comes at the beginning of a word. A suffix is at the end of a word, and it has meaning in it. Um, so, for example, we have procrastination, relaxation. Many English words end in A-T-I-O-N. By learning common suffixes, we can see patterns and improve our spelling because you will see many words are spelt with the same prefixes or the same suffixes. So procrastination, relaxation, they both end the same way. Here's another example of a common suffix in English. Itty. So we have here ability. Itty is the suffix in ability. It's the last part of the word. We have unity. Again, it has the same suffix, I-T-Y. Here's a very common suffix in English, I-S-M, ism. In English, the suffix ism means a belief in something or an idea or a thought. So we have here the word racism. We have here the word capitalism. Both of these words end in the suffix ism. And there's so many in English, sexism, um, communism, um, Catholicism. We have a lot of isms. So learning how to spell common prefixes and common suffixes will help you with your spelling. Let's learn some more tips about how to improve your spelling. So now I am going to teach you a rule that really helped me learn how to spell better. And that rule is I before E except after C. Children in North America learn this spelling rule. It's very common to help kids remember how to spell certain words. I before E except after C. So let's look at some examples of this. Many learners of English make a spelling mistake with the word friend. They can't remember, is it I-E or is it E-I? What do you think? Is it I-E or E-I? Well, think about the rule. I first, then E. The exception is after C. So there's no C in this word. So that means I comes first, then E. So this is the correct spelling. This is incorrect. I before E and the exception is C. Okay, so now let's look at another word. Receive. Which is the correct spelling of receive? Is it I-E or is it E-I? So let's take a moment to think about the rule. I before E, okay, except after C. Oh no, there's a C here. So how do we spell this? This is actually incorrect. Because there's this C, it's E-I. So this is correct. Native speakers make mistakes with these words a lot. Yesterday, I think I saw three different situations where a native speaker of English spelt receive incorrectly. So this is a very common spelling mistake. Okay, the last one I wanted to show you is with the word believe. Is it I-E or is it E-I? Well, again, let's look at the rule. I before E, okay, except after C. There's no C, so this means this is correct, I-E. E-I is incorrect. So that's just one spelling rule, but by memorizing rules like these, when you have doubts, they can really help you. Now, I should say that there are always exceptions in English. For every rule, you will always find an exception, but for the, the majority of cases, this is the rule, okay? So, another way to improve your spelling is start to notice what letters go together often. You might notice this. G-H-T is so common in English, in spelling. We don't pronounce G-H-T, but many words have G-H-T in it. 
like night, bought, thought, caught. Um, so GHT is common. It's silent, but it's good to learn that this is common in English spelling. You might see ST together a lot, or SC, or SK. Q and U go together a lot, like in question, quest. So learning and starting to focus on what letters go together a lot can help you with your spelling. So let's learn a couple more tips on how to improve your spelling. Okay, so there are different dialects of English. Many people use American English. Many people use British English. Um, so when it comes to spelling, there are different rules depending on the type of English you are learning. So let me show you some examples. So we have here the word center, C-E-N-T-R-E. -E. We also have the word here, center, C-E-N-T-E-R. Notice that the ending of the word is spelled differently. It's the same word, but it has a different spelling for the ending. Why is that? Well, one of these is American and one of these is British. E-R is a common American spelling. So you will see this in words like center. R-E is a common British spelling. So they use the same word, but they spell them differently. Here's another example. I have here the word favorite, F-A-V-O-U-R-I-T-E. And then I have favorite again, F-A-V-O-R-I-T-E. The spelling is different, even though it's the same word. Why? Because one of these is the American spelling and one of these is the British spelling. O-U-R in favorite, this is the British spelling, whereas just O-R is the American spelling. So my recommendation to you is think about what dialect of English do you want to learn and focus on that spelling. So if you are going to visit England and you're going to spend a lot of time working in England, you want to learn British spelling. If you're going to come to North America, um, well, if you're going to come to the US, you're going to want to learn American spelling. In Canada, we actually use British spelling. So for me, this is how I spell. So it depends on where you plan to go um, or why you are learning English. So here is my final spelling tip today. There are many letters in English that are silent. A silent letter is a letter that we write, but we don't pronounce. This makes English really difficult for many learners. I wanted to teach you a quick trick that can help you know whether or not you need a silent E at the end of a word. So many words in English end in E. And this E is not pronounced. It's silent. So how do you know if a word has a silent E or not when you write it? Well, there's a really cool pronunciation trick. I have here two words, A-T-E, eight, and A-T, at. One of these words has a silent E, and one of them does not have a silent E. How do I know which one has a silent E and which doesn't? Well, it has to do with the pronunciation. This is the letter A. The beginning of this word, eight, sounds like the letter A. A, eight. When the letter before um, the end sounds like the alphabet letter, it usually has a silent E at the end. So you might have to think about this for a moment, but again, A, A, T, these sound the same. So we add this silent E. Now, when I pronounce this word, at, A and at, they're different sounding A's. They don't have the same pronunciation. There's no silent E. 
okay? So let me show you some more examples. I have here another vowel, I. So this is the letter I. Now I have two words, B-I-T-E, bite, and B-I-T, bit. So these words are very similar, but one of these words has a silent E. How do we know which one has the silent E? Well, I think, okay, this is the alphabet letter I. Which vowel sounds like an I sound? Bite, bite, I. So this has the same sound as this alphabet letter. They both say I in the word. I, bite, I-T-E, ite. Um, so I know because the vowel here sounds like the alphabet letter, we can add an E here. This is different from bit, it. There's no E sound, um, sorry, there's no I sound here. Um, so as a result, okay, it, no, it doesn't sound like the letter I. So there's no vowel here. So you might be confused. That's okay, we're gonna look at another example. O. So this is an alphabet letter, the letter O. I have here the word note and not. One of these has a quiet E or a silent E, and one of them doesn't. How do I know that this needs an E? Well, I think, okay, the pronunciation. This is O. Does this have an O sound in it? Note, note, it does. So that means, okay, there needs to be an E at the end. Note. Now this is different from not. Is there an O sound here? Not. No, I don't hear the letter O in this word, so there's no silent E. So again, letter A has the A sound, letter I has the I sound, letter O has the O sound. What about you? So I have here the word cute. So it has that U sound, cute, versus cut, cut. That does not sound like the letter U. So because this has a U sound in it, like the letter U, I know we need an E at the end. Um, and I know this does not have a U sound, cut, so there's no silent E. One more example. I have here two words. This word has a silent E. This word does not have a silent E at the end. How do I know which has the E and which doesn't? Well, think about the letter E. Um, let's start here, pet. Pet doesn't have the letter E sound in it, pet, no. What about peat? That actually sounds like the letter E, peat. E, peat. So we need the silent E here. So that's one trick that can help you remember when you need a silent E or not. There are many different spelling tricks in English. Um, I've shown you a couple in today's video. I recommend um, taking our quiz and practicing what you learned here. So where can you do this quiz? If you visit www.ingvid.com, you can practice the different tips as well as some spelling. I also recommend you check out um, my YouTube channel and subscribe. I have many different videos on all sorts of different things related to English, including pronunciation, tips and tricks, spelling, grammar, vocabulary, and so much more. Finally, you can check out my website at www.teacheremma.com and there you can find even more free content. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you realize how important spelling is and this is something that you will work on. I think this is something many people need to work on. Thanks again for watching and until next time, take care.